It all began in 1995, where a young man named Takeshi Oda led the development of the upcoming horror light gun game with his fellow AM1 staff after the success of AM2's Virtual Cop in the arcades. The development of that light gun game evolved into something more intriguing by taking horror to the next level by choosing zombies as main enemies for a more realistic approach to appeal to a wider audience. In 1997, The House of the Dead was released worldwide in the arcades and entertainment spots. I still remember the day that I saw the game for the first time when I was only 6 years old at an old movie theater where I lived and it scared the living shit out of me to the point that I cried and hauled ass like Sonic the Hedgehog. Now in 2022, I am now a huge fan of the franchise by Sega and the series has led me to various successes over the years with connections, opportunities, and a growing community from the help of fellow fans out there. The first House of the Day game is my favorite game in the entire franchise that has yet to receive a proper port since its release on the Sega Saturn and Windows PC until Forever Entertainment made a deal with Sega to remake the game for a modern audience. This news has filled me with a lot of excitement since I've always wanted to see this game remade with modern graphics like other companies follow over the years. Today, I am here to review the House of the Dead remake courtesy of Forever Entertainment for providing me a review copy of the game early for me to share my thoughts and opinions on the anticipated game. Now, it's about time that the world learned about the true meaning of fear. The House of the Dead remake is essentially a high definition remake of the original House of the Dead arcade game for the Nintendo Switch developed by Megapixel Studio and published by Forever Entertainment who were both involved in the development of another beloved Sega franchise that received the remake, Panzer Dragoon Remake. The game has the same plot and gameplay as the original but with a few new added features and modes to add more replay value. As how the original game follows in terms of story. Dr. Kirian falls into madness as he researches immortality to create and release hostile, biological engineered creatures in the mansion. This chain of events has led AMS agents Thomas Rogan and G to investigate the disappearance of missing researchers, including Rogan's fiance, Sophie. Depending on your performance after completing the game, you will be rewarded with one of the three endings and a ranking score. The House of the Dead remake definitely does an amazing job when it comes to the cutscenes and cheesy voice acting which not only is faithful to the original arcade game that aimed for a B-horror film setting, it is also an improvement when you play as either of the two main characters alone or together with a friend as you can see unique character traits based on their actions. The developers really put a lot of detail on Rogan and G's personalities. One of my favorite scenes will have to be in Chapter 2 where if you play as Rogan, he will kick the shelf, expressing his revenge towards Kirian while G gently pushes the shelf out of the way to proceed on with his mission. The presentation of the game really has a great aesthetic going for itself with updated graphics showing us a gritty and darker version of the original arcade classic with certain moments that I will touch on later in this review. The remake comes with new modes and features that provides players with high replay value to make them want to come back for more. Starting with campaign mode. Campaign features two modes, original mode which allows players to play the game similar to the arcade version with no changes and enemy placements and horde mode which allows 15 or more enemies on screen. Both modes allows players to choose multiple options before starting the game such as difficult level selection from easy to arcade, classic and modern score modes and the option to choose cooperative or competitive multiplayer. Players can also look at their statistics and leaderboards to see their performances in the game and view their highest scores. Gallery mode is another highlight in this remake where players can check out a list of creatures that they killed during campaign mode. The ability to view achievements that players can earn by completing certain conditions and the armory of weapons that can be unlocked if you are able to save all the researchers in campaign mode. 
The few things that I feel that are missing in this mode is a model viewer of the playable and non-playable characters along with the option to listen to the game soundtrack. Speaking of the soundtrack, it's very unfortunate that the original music that we know and love that was composed by former AM1 composer Tetsuya Kawauchi is missing due to unknown reasons, but the new soundtrack that took inspiration from the original isn't too bad at all, so I take back the Halloween music comment. In fact, if you listen closely, you may hear some familiar melody from the original game. Take a listen. When it comes to the gameplay of the House of the Dead remake, it's fun and addicting, but it does come with some issues. If you have played the original game a lot in the arcades and are highly skilled, do not expect it to be one on one with the original arcade game. This remake feels like a brand new game with slightly different mechanics. On a positive note, for those who are worried about the controls, the game has multiple options to choose from to satisfy the player's way of playing the game. You can play with the standard analog control or gyroscope with the Joy-Con controller with the ability to change sensitivity and course of color to your liking. The game feels very satisfying when you start shooting down creatures in your path as you progress through each chapter. The blood and gore factor in this remake is absolutely fun as you blast the limbs of the creatures with ragdoll physics, getting head splattering shots which hasn't been seen in recent House of the Dead titles other than the House of the Dead 3 and Overkill. The branching path system remains the same which allows you to take certain paths depending on the situation, whether it's saving a researcher or shooting switches and doors. The House of the Dead Remake's multiplayer mode is also a fun and enjoyable experience if you have a friend along for the shooting mayhem, either through cooperation or competitively. I even tested out the gyroscope feature with a family member which emulates the arcade light gun experience really well as long as you have some distance away from the television. If you choose modern score mode, you and a friend can select either Rogan or G. However, there are no other unlockable characters or costumes like the original game did, which is very unfortunate that we won't be able to play as other versions of the AMS agents and Sophie Richards. The other nitpicks I have with the gameplay is that some of the enemies are a bit too fast and are sometimes harder to kill, unlike in the original game. Another frustration I have with the game was that the camera shakes unexpectedly in certain situations which led me to shoot researchers either by accident or to their deaths at the hands of the creatures. At least you can see unique death sequences if you let them die and they are quite brutally fun to watch. Like I can't believe Simon did a 3 hit chain combo on a researcher as if he was Muhammad Ali. The boss fights were also a mixed bag for me playing this game, with some fights being a lot of fun in the beginning while others in later chapters felt a bit too easy to defeat and drags out way longer than it should. But moments like their introductions and the fight against the hangman when he charges at the players by running on the pillars to knock them off the roof was definitely a badass boss moment. Going on to horde mode itself is a different beast in its own way and is definitely not recommended for those who are new to the game as it can be a bit chaotic with so many creatures on screen to the point that it can be overwhelming. However, once you unlock the armory and collect hidden weapons around the Kyrian mansion, you will be kicking zombie ass in no time. One thing I can definitely tell you is that the grenade launcher and assault rifle really comes in handy against a group of creatures and projectiles. Overall. The House of the Dead remake is a fun and decent video game, but not a perfect remake. But don't let it stop you from checking it out and playing with a friend. Personally, the original House of the Dead is still my number one favorite game in the series, and I hope that developers take feedback to improve the game few faults through patches in order to make it an even better experience for everyone, especially if it receives more ports down the line. 
I would be totally down to play this on the PC with a light gun accessory and would like to see this game get as much support as possible with future patches and paid DLC with playable characters like Sophie Richards and the female DBR researcher. I give the House of the Dead remake a score of 6.5 out of 10. What are your thoughts on the House of the Dead remake? And would you like to see more video game reviews on upcoming Sega titles and other video games? Feel free to leave comments down below and be sure to support this video by giving it a like, subscribe to my channel, and support the channel through donations on Streamlabs for more future content. Until then, take care everyone.